Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergsdick Arcade at BergsdickArcade.net and here we are, I thought I'd go ahead and... Well, let's go ahead and recreate that racing game we did with Photon. But this time around we're going to use the Unity Networking, as I really do like it better. It's just so much simpler to get things up and running and, you know, try that prototype, see how the game goes. So let's just go ahead, we'll jump right into Unity and check it out. So I've got a brand new Unity project here, I'm going to go ahead and create a terrain. And we'll just go ahead, um, we'll add a few bumps to it. Uh, let's keep my brush size pretty big, opacity low. And let's actually make sure we're on the first one. Let's do an opacity of one. And I'm just going to go ahead and just scatter some bumps. And if we zoom in, you can see the bumps forming. Just so it has a little bit, of, a little bit of balance to it. All right, so we got that done. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and well, let's just save the scene first. Then we'll make our prefab. Let's so go ahead and make a new folder, scenes, and we'll just call this demo one. Then we'll also go ahead and make a folder for our prefabs. And let's go ahead and make a prefab. To start off with, let's go ahead. We'll make that cube. We'll race around with it. Uh, let's make sure that trains at zero, zero, zero. Yep, let's do the same thing with the cube. All right, let's run on the edge. Gonna go ahead and select them. And let's move them up a bit. Just so he doesn't fall off. Come on. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be our player. So let's start it off. Um, what are we going to call him? Let's just call him Evil Cubie. And you'd think, you know, I spelt it enough times, now I know how to spell it. <laughs> well, let's just go ahead, we'll just call him Cubie. Because this is actually going to be the player one. And we're not necessarily going to be evil. But anyway, so we'll go ahead, we'll select him. I'm going to add a few things to him. First, I want a rigid body. And I'll give him a mass of 10. This one here, when we start the game, if he's up in the air, he'll fall. Turn that off. All right, next thing we want to add is a script to move them around. So let's go ahead, we'll create a script folder. And I'm going to go ahead, jump in here. And the first script I'm going to call, we'll just call it, uh, I don't know, player movement. And we'll go ahead, load that up in your IDE of choice. Okay, we'll go ahead, we'll change a few things. We're not going to be using collections in here. So we're rid of that. We are going to be using the Unity engine networking namespace that's not all completing that always bugs me when it does doesn't and of course it helps if you spell it right now my son's brought home a nice sore throat for me so i'm on a bit of medication so this is going to be even more exciting than usual with my typing but let's go ahead um basically what this does is it allows us to access all of the networking that comes built in with unity and to take advantage of that with this class what we're going to do is inherit from a network behavior, and a network behavior is the exact same thing as a mono behavior. It actually inherits from it, except that it adds all of the networking stuff in it as well. And that's what we're gonna want for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the functions that it comes with. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a float for the speed. And to start off with, I'll just go ahead, we'll just set it to 10. And I'm gonna come into my update. And we're just going to go ahead and grab our transform, dot position, plus equals, a new vector 3. And all we're going to do is get the input from the player for the x and y axis and move our guy around according to that. So input, dot get axis. And for x, I'm going to grab horizontal. And that will be the x value. For the y value, I'm going to leave it at 0. And then for the Z value, the moving back and forth, input dot get axis again. And this time I'm going to get the vertical one. And that's it for that. But we're also going to go ahead and multiply it by speed. And I don't want this to be frame dependent. I want it to be time dependent. So of course we have to say also multiply it by time dot delta time. There we go, and provided I made no mistakes, that should just work. 
So I'm going to come in, look at our QB here. And actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and switch this back to mono behavior. And we'll attach it this way first. And we have it right up here. Uh, speed, I made private. We'll go ahead and we'll hit start. Yeah, let's zoom out. That's actually pretty quick, isn't it? Yeah, we should slow that down a bit. Uh, so I'm going to click on the X. Uh, let's take a look and see what we did. I did something wrong. And that's because I forgot this. <laughs> now let's go. We'll jump back in. Well, and shrink it down a little bit so I can see the full line. And it helps to line up your parentheses. There we go. So the whole vector 3 is contained in here. Come back in. We'll try it out now. And there we go. We can move around. It doesn't turn or anything. It just moves. I'll go ahead and save that. We're going to go back to a network behavior. We'll save that off. And now when we start it, nothing changes. Remember, it inherits from mono behavior, but we do have access to all of the networking goodies that come with it. And take a look at the first one here. And that is, if we are the local player, we'll just go ahead and we'll change our color. And we'll do that in start. And we'll come in, we're going to say, if is local player, so this is something new that we get from the network behavior. We're going to say game object dot get component. The component we want is our renderer. And we'll grab the material dot color. And we'll go ahead, we'll make that equal to color dot blue. There we go. Now we come back into Unity and we go to start it up. We get a couple errors. Right here. And it says that there's no network identity on this game object. And we're also getting a null reference. And if we go ahead and we click them, not a whole lot happens. And the reason is now that we're trying to access the networking goodies that come in here, we actually do need to get a network identity. And there's a couple of ways we could add this. Uh, one is just to go ahead and grab the QB, come down here. I'll just clear this out, come down to the network part and add a network identity. But since our script inherits from network behavior, we could also just go ahead and we'll notice we have a couple extra lines, so we'll get to that in a second. But let's go ahead and remove this component and re-add it. It will automatically add one for us. So our play, player movement script here, we have uh, two new things that are showing up, the network channel and the network send interval. And we get these because we're a network behavior. We'll see later on that when we set up our network manager, it comes by default with two channels that we can send well, whatever information this component contains to all the other clients on the server. And we do this, well, we'll be showing a little bit later, so a little bit of code we can use to change this channel. For now, we're just gonna go ahead and leave it to zero. And the network send interval, this is a uh, in time, so every 0.1 seconds is how often we send out this information. And again, we can change this in code in our script or use an attribute for it. Uh, but if you set it to zero, that means it's going to send every frame. And obviously, the larger the number you put, the, the I get think of it as the more delayed the update will be. And it really does depend on the object that you're playing with or that you're creating. You really don't want to send it every frame. That's that's a lot of bandwidth being used. And later on in code, we could actually go ahead and just turn that off and maybe only send events. So maybe if you have a globe uh, and it's going to start spinning and you want it to spin on everyone's screen, you'll go ahead and you just fire off an event that says, you know, start spinning. But you don't actually want to send the, the rotation information every frame or every 0.1 seconds or whatever you have that set to. You would just send an event later on that says, you know, stop spinning. And it would just stop all the spinning everywhere. But this is something for a little bit later on. And we're going to come up to the network identity. And we have two options here, server only and local player authoritative. Think, I like to think of it this way. Does the server need to control this? No. Uh, does the local machine need to control this? Yes. Now we're going to be moving, right? 
Uh, most people automatically want to just put everything on the server and just be like, oh, the server's going to control everything. But unfortunately, that just makes everything really slow and bogs everything down. So you really do have to sit down and pick and choose what you want to be local authoritative or server authoritative. So we'll go ahead, we'll just select uh, player authoritative. We'll go ahead and hit start. And uh, while our cube disappeared, hey, what happened? <laughs> well, the reason why this happens is because we don't actually have our network set up, our network manager. And anything that has a network identity is automatically going to be disabled in all the scenes until they actually connect to a server. So we'll do that next. But I did want to point out that we go ahead and select our QB. We do have some stuff here, some, some other information. I'm not really going to go over this. You can go ahead and just look up the network identity on the Unity documentation that talks about all of these parameters. So let's go ahead. We'll go ahead. We'll make our network server or sorry, our network manager. So we'll go in, make a an empty again. I'm going to call mine network manager. And there's two things we want to add to this. If we come down to the network. We want to add the HUD and the manager. Luckily, if we add the HUD, we get the manager for free. And the HUD, if we start it, is just this little display here. And of course, we have a couple offsets. We can move it around. And we can make it appear and disappear. And while it is running, we do get these new options down here, runtime controls. And clicking one of these is equivalent of clicking any of this. So if we go ahead and we do click this, we notice we do appear. And we can move around. But we are getting an error. And it's telling us that the player prefab is empty in the network manager. So let's go ahead, we'll stop this. We'll jump back into the network manager. Uh, we're done looking at this. And I'll cover these as we go along because a lot of these aren't that important until you actually start using them. But open up spawn info. We do have a player prefab and that's what it's complaining about that is empty. So I'll come into my prefab folder, take my QB. I'm just going to head drag them in. Let's go ahead. We'll delete them from the scene. And we'll take that prefab. We'll put it up into that player prefab up here. Now we have something. We do have a check to say that we're going to auto create the player. So when the player joins the network, it will automatically create it for us. And the spawn method does not matter yet. We'll be looking at that probably in the next video. Let's go ahead. We'll start now. And there's nothing there. Let's go ahead and actually uncheck everything. And now when we hit to host the game, boom, we show up. And since we are local, we've now turned blue. And of course, it works just like it did before. So will the game work over a network? Well, let's do one quick build. I know everyone wants to know before we start going into other videos, what happens before I do, I know I'm going to be doing a lot of builds here. So I'm going to change a few settings over here. Um, so I am going to be doing the standalone builds. I'm going to come down and nothing there. I'm going to come to splash screen. I'm going to make sure that my splash screen is turned off so I don't have to look at it. Just a little bit fast because we do end up making a lot of builds over and over and over again. So a couple seconds actually, actually helps out. So I'm go ahead and turn off default full screen, make it whatever resolution you want. I'm running in 1080p for the recording. So I make it 800 by 600 and you do want it to run in the background. And with that done, I'm just going to hit build and run. It's going to ask me where I want it. I'll just throw on the desktop. Luckily, small scene. This will not take long to build. And I thought I got rid of the dialogue box. We'll get it on the next one. So right here is our game. We'll go ahead. Close this down, start it up here, hit play. And I'm going to host here and we'll have to unfull screen. And we can see I can move around, right? And we'll come in here. We can't see anything. We're going to change the camera. I'm going to go ahead and we can't host again because we already have a local host going. And if we had some sort of debug here, we'd see a lot of messages coming out. But we'll go ahead and hit the client. And there we go. We notice that we're blue over here and this guy is white and ours, of course, we're blue over here and the local guy is white. And if we move around here, it's moving both of us around up here. We don't want that. And we're not updating here either. We jump in here. We try to move around. Same thing. Well, in the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll learn how to decouple that. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. 
Lions, Tigers, and Bears.